our uh, Wednesday edition of our daily uh, press conference. Um, uh, we're honored to have today um, House Committee on Muslim Affairs Chairman and Lano Del Nota, First District Representative Muhammad Khalid Q. Dimaporo, House Committee on Legislative Franchises Chairman and Paranaque City, Second District Representative Gas S. Tambunting, Aklan, Second District Representative Chudorico Ted. Aresco, Jr., and House Assistant Majority Leader and La Union First District Representative Francisco Paolo P. Ortega de Pip. Uh, sir, you have the floor for your uh, short uh, opening uh, remarks. Auzu bilahim ina shaitan irahim, bismillahirrahman irahim, and uh, Ramadan Karim to everybody uh, here with us today uh, as we are starting the holy month of uh, Ramadan for uh, your Muslim Filipino brothers and sisters. I'd like to thank on behalf of the 19th Congress, again, the partnership that we have with our uh, media friends uh, to relate to the general public uh, any concerns that uh, need to be threshed out uh, so that uh, we can uh, better communicate our work here in Congress, and be more responsive to the needs of the nation. So thank you and uh, good morning to all. Mga pala, sorry, parang hindi na ako marunong. Maganda umaga po sa inyo lahat at isang karangalan makasama kayo ngayong umaga nito. Good morning to everyone, especially our media friends. Uh, happy Ramadan, uh, Assistant Majority Floor Leader Kalida Dibaporo and Assistant Majority Floor Leader uh, Paulo Ortega and our honored chairman, uh, Chair Gaston Buntig. Uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, good morning and of course, na imbang uh, bigat to our district, our first district, and our province of La Union. And to you, our friends from the media. Ganda umaga po. Thank you. May I call on Isa Bendanyo uh, from uh, JMADCW for today's first question. Magandang umaga po. Uh, yesterday po sa isang prayer rally sa Maynila, binanggit po ni former President uh, Rodrigo Duterte na yung, ter, uh, na yung charter change na isinsulong natin ngayon sa Kamara ang Puntirya niya ay term extension. Tapos ilang beses niya pong binanatan si President Marcos Jr. at marami pa po siyang mga sinabi. Your thoughts po about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. First, before I answer, I'd like to say na on my part, dahil taga Mindanao ko, mahal na mahal namin si former Pangulo President uh, uh, Duterte, especially for what he's done for the Mindanao region. Having said that, I will not forget a speech na sinabi niya when he was congressman, ayaw niya yung trabaho dito, so hindi siya pumasok sa kongreso, something like that. No? Uh, whether it's a joke or if it was real, uh, you know, um, it kind of hints na uh, maybe he doesn't under or he hasn't been clarified on what's happening here in Congress. And that is, uh, we have our... Uh, legislative process. You know? And when it comes to regular bills, that can happen in the BICAM. But if you listen to the debates in the plenary, when it comes to RBH6 and RBH7, there needs to be a synchronization between the House and the Senate. We cannot vote three-fourths on two different uh, versions, because that may lead into complications and then may lead into a challenge in the Supreme Court on how we are conducting uh, an amendment to the Constitution. So when, it, when he has that claim that uh, this is about term extensions, etc., etc., na bagla, biglang mama magic ito, maybe during the bicam, I don't see that happening. Uh, it's very clear, it's in black and white, that we're only dealing specifically with the econo economic provisions. And then secondly, also, uh, what the 19th Congress is trying to do under the leadership of President Bongbong Marcos, uh, there's no losers here. That was what's nice with what the majority leader did uh, and Speaker Martin Romualdez. We had the committee of the whole and uh, uh, all of us uh, were listened to the debates and majority of the research persons spoke positively 
about the uh, change in the Constitution, specifically the economic provisions, there's been very little negative comments. The only negative comments that you, we, we heard in the debates was one, in regards to basic education. Number two, the conduct, the conduct or the manner we are amending the Constitution, if it is really in line with uh, uh, the 1987 Constitution. So there are only two negative. There's, everything else was all positive. Um, advertisement, uh, public utilities, um, corporate ownership, all of that was all positive. Uh, unlike the, the uh, you know, for those of us that served in the 17th Congress, it never really re went into debate uh, when we were discussing federalism. When we were discussing federalism, it might have led to, to also charter change. It will lead, it will require charter change. And um, uh, what's this? Uh, when we were discussing it, if you remember, we were all organized into 333. Uh, mga deputy speakers, so there were three for Mindanao. And the general template there was, that was how we were going to divide Mindanao into states, and also Visayas and the Luzon region. So I mean, it was like uh, Eastern Mindanao and Western Mindanao, and then you have the BARM. When you're talking about charter change for federalism, it was very clear in, an, in our internal discussions, you will have big winners and big losers. For example, if you merge together Caraga, Davao, and uh, Sok Sargent, then you have big fishing, uh, industry in Davao City, and then mining in Caraga. What's in the Zambanga Peninsula? Uh, coconut land? No? So, you know, that, that proposition of charter change for the purpose of federalism is a little bit more detrimental to various parts of our country. The proposition for charter change under the Bongbong Marcos administration, uh, there will be winners but no losers. That's how I understand it when it came to the debate in the plenary. And last but not least, um, because he kind of hit the parliamentary form of government, that's not on the table. That's not on the table. It's strictly economic. But if you want to even discuss that, we have to look into the accomplishment itself of the Duterte administration. And that is the passage of the Bank Samoro Organic Law. The Bank Samoro Organic Law is actually supposed to be a template for the federal form of government. And you have a parliamentary form of government inside the Bank Samoro Autonomous Regional Government. So it's a little bit of an oxymoron for our dear former president to attack the parliamentary form of government. And then in his time, in his administration, it is one of his greatest accomplishments for the Mindanao region. Um. Magpipigibak lang ako dun sa comments ni, ni Congressman Khalid. Um, I have, in the previous press cons, um, nag-statement nag naman po tayo na economic cha-cha po to. Purely economic cha-cha. Even if you watch the debates in the Senate, the House, wala naman pong pinag-uusapan tungkol sa politika. So... Sabi nga natin during the debates, we have, we have heard a lot of resource uh, speakers. Even nga po yung medyo nasa negative side ng economic chacha, they were, even, they were even spilling out statements na, ah, baka pwede naman kung ganito. Baka pwede naman kung ganito. So, hindi pa nga totally against yung sa economic chacha. Because eh? we have never discussed a single thing about Anything na political, extension of terms, anything political, wala po na pag-usapan. Di ba nga po, nag, nandito rin kayo, sinabi po natin, ang political cha-cha po, it will come when the economy is, ano, is blooming, when the economy, economy is better. Kasi nga po, um, if you go to other countries, more progressive countries, nakikita po natin, parang lesser governed na po sila eh. Kasi nga po, they have... They have better lives, they have work, um, they, can, they have sustainable lifestyles, mas okay po ang pamumuhay nila. So hindi na po masyado iniisip kung ano po yung, ano po pang benepisyo, ano pang nakukuha natin sa gobyerno. Kasi nga po, maganda na po yung takbo ng ekonomiya sila. So they're, they're letting their leaders lead accordingly kasi nga po, na sasagot na po yung problema ng kahirapan, na sasagot na po yung problema ng edu education, na sasagot na po yung problema ng ng ekonomiya, ng sariling pamumuhay nila. So, yun lang po, in addition. Yes, 
as a uh, an economist and uh, having expertise in international finance, the political ripple that uh, the former president uh, Rodrigo Duterte uh, admirer po ko niya, fan po ko galing sa Aklan. Uh, what he did was uh, a political ripple that has a grave economic impact on our country. Because as an uh, international banker, that ripple that he created uh, may burn the house down. Sayang po, kagagaling lang ni Presidente BBM and uh, our honored speaker, Martin Romaldes, kadadala lang nila ng $1.7 billion. And those people that they talked to some 48 hours ago uh, will say, whoa, wait a minute. You're having your uh, political uh, instability and uh, we will we'll hold our uh, investments in the Philippines. That is what happened. There will be a uh, some uh, suspended uh, animation from all these targeted uh, foreign direct investments into our country with that uh, move of uh, our honored uh, former president, uh, Digong. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, may, uh, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Ed Galvez of uh, FBS Radio for his question. Good morning, Gongs. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, BP Sara's participation in a prayer rally in Manila, but uh, in support of the SMNI, but it turned out to be an uh, anti-PBBM rally? And uh, do you think it sends a message of division? And would it be appropriate for her to resign as a cabinet member? Your message, sir, for BP Sara. Uh, uh, for me personally, no. Um, uh, in terms of her uh, call for re resignation, I think that is the prerogative of our president. The litmus test is when she has lost the faith and confidence of our commander in chief. Uh, and that is uh, President BBM. And that will be the only time that she should really um, resign, and do the right thing and resign, if the president no longer believes in her. Secondly, uh, her participation in the prayer rally, um, I only saw tidbits of it. Um, what I saw, who I saw on the stage uh, were uh, Senators Bato and Senator Bongo as far as national figures. Um, from what I heard uh, and I saw, uh, VP Sara was among the crowd, no? among the crowd uh, talking to the people. And we don't really know what her purpose is there. I would want to believe that uh, her purpose is to at least uh, neutralize you know, um, the former president. Na wag naman masyadong <laughs> masipag yung ban at siya kay, uh, kay uh, President Bongbong Marcos because she is still his cabinet secretary for education. She can still do so much good for our nation. And it really was you know, a wonderful thing for all of us, the Mindanaoans, I think also the Visayans, and also for the Ilocanos, Northern Luzon, to see the two together, the uni team. That is the greatest, you know, I think the closest in uh, modern history where the Philippine people as a nation were united. So I would not want to give up on that dream na sinasabi ng mga tao na wala na yung unitim. No? Uh, I wouldn't want to give that on, uh, up on that. I hope that uh, uh, being you know, uh, his daughter, um, our former president, uh, President Duterte, will uh, somewhat be, you know, um, uh, uh, in, a, in a way, parang tapered down or, uh, you know, like... Uh, dialogue can open um, uh, because this doesn't help anybody uh, this is uh, and again this is the holy month of ramadan you know uh, for most of us muslims uh, for all of us muslims this is a month of peace a month of prayer 
And I'm sure that uh, on behalf of all Muslim Filipinos, what's in the bottom of our hearts is that uh, our nation will, will succeed in uh, moving forward peacefully and united, both Muslims and Christians alike. And it will be very difficult for us to do this when two great leaders are fighting against each other, President Bongbong Marcos and former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. In regards to the prayer rally, is it an opposition? Is it really something to be worried about? Kami naman, we're from Mindanao. So, basta lang walang armas, walang crossfire, walang ano, uh, violence. I mean, you know, uh, there's no harm. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's part of our democratic process uh, for us to be, have freedom of prayer, uh, freedom of opinion, freedom of speech. And, uh, and um, in the end of the day, I, I strongly be believe that the majority of the Filipino people be will rally with our president, President Bongbong Marcos, because he's doing the right thing. Are there any additional remarks from other guests? Okay. Um, Billy Vegas from Abante Politico for... Uh, for his questions. Hingi uh, ay ifa-follow up ko lang po baka lang po meron kay message, iba pang message kay ano. Kaya former president uh, Duterte at kay Vice President President Sara kasi it turned out na yung mga pinupuntahan nilang prayer rally nagiging anti-BBM rally. Uh, yun nga no, um, for me parang I really don't understand the concept of the prayer rally because it's becoming <laughs> a different kind of uh, rally. Um, minsan mellow, minsan mainit na, umiinit na, umiinit. Pero um, the personalities who are there should be the personalities who are first and foremost na dapat nandiyan na tutulong sa gobyerno para ayusin yung mga problema natin. Hindi yung dadagdagan pa yung mga political tension. But for me, they, they, they should also... Of course, lahat naman tayo, walang monopoly ng love of country. Lahat yan, mahal nila yung bansa. Pero, mas marami pong malalaking problema yung bansa kaysa mag-uumpisa tayo. We stir the pot with political, political problems, political accusations, yung mga yung mga hindi na po kailangan na sinasabi sa entablado, na syempre it will only agitate uh, the public, yung mga nagrarally. So, I encourage them na ano, tulungan natin yung gobyerno natin, tulungan natin si Presidente Bongbong Marcos kasi ang aga po eh, ang aga po ng politika, napaka-aga po. So, tulungan po natin yung bansa. Yes, akala ko economic slant to. <laughs> Naging politika. In terms of uh, statistics, in the his history of the Filipino, nakikita po natin na uh, mapagbigay ang Filipino. So, sa midterm period ng isang presidente, pinagbibigyan po na ang Filipino. So, lahat po na nag sa isang presidente during the midterm ng presidente, yung first three years niya, ay buhabagsak sa popularity, buhabagsak sa politika. So, sabi nga ng kasama natin, assistant majority floor leader Ortega, napakaaga, 2025 ba election, ngayon na nagrarali na sila. And uh, kung bumalik tayo sa EDSA revolution, uh, ayun po ang inumpisahan. So, it's a uh, antique page, no? uh, they cut and paste and try to put in in this time na madali ang social media. So, hindi na siguro natutugma. It's a contradiction in terms of personality. Nagtutugma yung prayer rally ngayon na ang dami-daming uh, potential na investments na nakukuha ni Presidente Bongbong, uh, kausap ko po mga bankero sa international at saka they are uh, bullies on our economy because we have one of the most uh, populated countries in Southeast Asia. We have an educated workforce 
at tumataas na po ang sweldo sa China. So, nagsisilipata na yung mga manufacturing uh, jobs to Southeast Asia. Eh, mas gusto na mga investor dito sa Pilipinas. Kaya, economic provisions ng Constitution ang uh, binibigyan natin ng atensyon. So, again, uh, sana yung mga political rally sa uh, according sa COMELEC, COMELEC period na lang, saka na muna mag-rally-rally uh, at saka uh, hindi na gamitin uh, in God's name yung mga whatever uh, personal or political objectives. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Billy. Uh, kay Congas, boss. Yung ano ba, yung bill na inapprove kahapon, will it go sa regular meal? I mean, pag that, kailangan ba ipasari siya ng Senate para ma-revoke uh, ma yung uh, franchise ng SMNI? Opo, kailangan po dumaan po po ng Senado to. This will pass the uh, regular process. Uh, kailangan basahin sa, sa plenaryo ng Kongreso, second, third reading, at dadalhin po sa Senado. Uh, habol pa. Isa. Ha, uh, kong isa pa po. Uh, regarding lang po sa statement niya, no, ni VP Sara, sabi niya, Kibuloy deserves fair trial daw. Well, I think uh, she was mentioning is dapat sa korte. Mm -hmm. no? I think uh, that's, uh, that's uh, ginagalang po natin yung opinion niya. Uh, dito naman po sa uh, uh, Kongreso, ang pag-uusapan po rito ay uh, yung prangkisa ng SMNI. At ito ay binigay po ng uh, Kongreso. Kung ito ay binigay ng Kongreso, Kongreso rin po lang ang pwede bumawi po ito. At yun naman po ang proseso. And as far as due process concerned, dito po sa hearing po namin, six months has been given, uh, six, five months of hearing, six hearings were conducted. And pagay ko, mas marami nga ang sinabi yung company ni ano ni SMNI uh, kesa po kay kesa po sa mga congressmen talaga po lahat po ng kanilang uh, paliwanag ay ating uh, pinakinggan at nagbigyan po natin lahat ng katanungan nila Thank you from inquirer online uh, Gab Lalo you're recognized Sir two questions sana Uh, first of all, do you think yung last night's prayer rally in support of Pastor K. Buloy and the SMNI is an effort to undermine the legislature's authority, particularly the Senate? Kasi the Senate Committee on Women, Children, and Family Relations has already sought for an arrest order against the pastor. Do you think it undermines the authority of the legislative, sir? Definitely, we're going to speak for the Senate. No? And... Uh... I think uh, that question should be also addressed to the senators. Kung yung pangalawa po, sir, do you think there's a greater chance for the pastor to show up in the House hearings? Kasi parang may promise po si Attorney Topasio na he'll try to convince si Pastor Kibuloy to attend. Kaso, sir, uh, on a, another side, pa paano mangyayari doon? Kung a-attend siya dito, pwede ba siyang damputin ng Senate Uh, Sergeant at Arms? Pagay ko, uh, hindi. No? Um, pero alam po niyo, um, yung the mere fact na nagbigay pa rin ng palugit ng committee ng uh, tatlong araw on the request of Attorney Topaz to just shows you kung gano'n hong kaluwag ang committee sa pagbibigay po ng lahat ng request nila. Maski na po sa limang buwan, minsan hindi dumating si Pastor Kibuloy, inimbitahan po siya apat na beses, ay uh, pinagbigyan pa rin na on the special request of uh, Attorney uh, Topasio na bigyan po hanggang biyernes. So talaga ho lahat ho ng uh, pagbibigay at uh, luwag ay, ay binigay po namin during the, during the five five-month hearing. So, tagsimula po kami November at uh, kahapon lang po na desisyonan. Sir, do you think he'll show up? I mean, we cannot speak for the pastor, but do you think there's a possibility that he'll show up? 
habang may buhay, may, <laughs> may posibilidad. Are you okay with your questions, Gab? Thank you. Uh, Pauline question from um, Joby Marie de la Cruz um, of Business Mirror for uh, Kong Ted Haresco. Considering the decline of 6.6% in full year 2023 foreign direct investment, net close to $8.9 billion from the recorded $9.5 billion in 2022, exacerbated by global uncertainties that discouraged foreign investors as reported by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas, how could potential revisions to the Philippine Constitution be instrumental in mitigating or addressing this construct, uh, contraction of FDI net inflow, sir? Napakagandang question po yan. Um, history, as we know it now, is not the history that the framers of our 1987 constitution held. Uh, ang paggawa nila ng constitution uh, noon ay inward looking. They were ho hoping, aspiring that uh, the capital investment required will be generated by Filipinos in the Philippines. So, na-realize natin ngayon, uh, from the 9th Congress to the 19th Congress, we do not have enough capital. It takes 1.1 million pesos to create one job. Uh, 16 million, 11 million underemployed, uh, another 4 million unemployed. 16 million, uh, wala pong... Uh, 11 million and near poverty, those who are earning uh, daily wage. Every. So, tapos uh, another 5 million unemployed. So, ang hirap hirap po na magwiwis lahat ng policy makers na sana bigla na lang mag-appear ang pera para mag-create ng jobs. Hindi po ginagawa yan. Mga katabi natin mga bansa, nagpalit ng konstitusyon nine times sa uh, ang uh, Indonesia, 20 times, and Thailand, Vietnam. So, ayun po, uh, sila outward looking. They created export industries. Outward looking, tayo inward looking. So, ayun po, uh, sunod-sunod na mga batas na, o may bills na pinasa namin dito sa Congress, mula mo 9th Congress, 19th Congress, 382 bills trying to remove the restrictions in the Constitution. Ayun lang po ang ginagawa natin ngayon. Sana ma-realize ng mga ibang tao, lalo na mga ekonomista sa, sa Senado, mga businessmen, na, na alam naman nila na uh, inward looking, kaya palagi silang kumukuha ng, uh, ng mga partners, but they are limited up to 40%. So, Pag binuksan po natin yan ay makikita natin ang garden with low-hanging fruits. Pupunta lang pupunta dito yung Japan, Germany, uh, magta-transfer sila ng mga manufacturing jobs dito sa Pilipinas kung bubuksan lang natin talaga genuinely ang ating ekonomiya. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Kat Corbes from Radio Pilipinas. Uh, good morning po, Kongs. Uh, yung question ko po, particular po kay Kong Khalid. Uh, sir, uh, tanong ko lang po, ano po ba yung ating mga security measures na pinapatupad ngayon, specifically dahil sa observance po ng Ramadan and uh, by next year po, meron po tayong warm elections po. Uh, lalo na po, Previously po, meron pong naging uh, pag-atake po uh, sa Lanao del Norte. So, ano lang po yung mga security measures natin? Thank you for the question. No? Um, first, uh, in regards to security measures, uh, during the holy month of Ramadan, this is the time na we expect our Muslim brothers, especially some yung mga extremists, if they really are Muslims, dapat wala nang ganito. Uh, Iaambush nila yung mga police, yung mga military namin. Uh, this is supposed to be parang ceasefire month. No? 
but what was worrisome about that ambush, they, there were pursuit operations, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, the leader of that ISIS group uh, surrendered um, to, the, to the provincial government. Um, bata pa sila, mga 15 years old. They can't even speak Tagalog. They can't speak uh, only Maranao. And that's uh, proof that uh, these groups, extremists, are staying in the pinakabukid na area, away from everyone. Now, that is a symptom of a failure within the BARM area, which we are addressing under EDCOM 2. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the failure of basic education. Uh, and uh, I hope nobody will take offense to this. Uh, it's, some, it's an old historical culture or mindset that the Philippines is a Catholic country, therefore Catholic education. So the very traditional mindset Muslim Filipinos in the Bukid, uh, in the far out areas, might feel that they don't trust and bring their kids to DepEd schools. Mm -hmm. They would prefer that their kids go to madra madra madar madrasas or the Madari system. And this is what we need to focus on, which brings us into the debates for RBH7. Uh, last time I was here, I said if somebody asked me a question and I answered na we're really limited with funds in the government. If we are going to solve the Madaris issue within the BARM, we will need so much funds. But if you look at the debates outside of the BARM rin, kailangan po, ng daming pundo rin, ang kailangan ng education. I think they were saying 300 billion last night. Uh, you know, uh, so um, this is why we need partners in development. And when you open up our constitution to provide more opportunities for um, foreigners to come and help our um, our far-flung areas, and then one specific example are, are, is the Muslim world: Saudi Arabia, Daming Pera, uh, Brunei, Malaysia. And in in Islam, we have this the one of the religious requirements of zakat, which is like charity. So given it's not really an investment, you know, it's an investment for ourselves, for our religion, to come into the Philippines and establish, help establish a um, uh, proper Madari system so that our children in Muslim areas can read and write Arabic and not be, you know, not be thrown into areas that they will end up being recruited by um, terrorist organizations. So, um, you know, this, 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 uh, what happened in Lanao del Norte, the attack, the surrender of the uh, ISIS uh, leaders, uh, you know, brings to light again the problem that we have. And how do we solve that solution? So one is that Madaris. Second is uh, we are discussing now the uh, part of the peace agreement and the um, uh, Bangsamo organic law is the transformation of the MILF base camps. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be 10 billion a year allocated to the transformation of these base camps into peaceful communities. None has been given so far from our knowledge. So again, we have the problem of lack of government funding. This is again where we need to find ways to bring in foreigners to come in and transform these communities into economic powerhouses. Then most of those camps are fertile agricultural territory. The camp of uh, Commander Bravo in Lanao del Norte, from what I heard, he was able to partner with a GN power plant uh, who somehow, I don't know how, was, is uh, involved with uh, you know, an, an American investor. Um, uh, and they put up a abaca plantation. So when you have economic, uh, especially with agriculture, uh, you know, that can lead to development and that can lead to sustainable peace. We would like to see a time in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region where we can partner with our uh, Muslim brothers outside other countries, Saudi Arabia, uh, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, and then have like another version of, you know, Dol, Del Monte. That is critical for the development of Mindanao because um, a peaceful barm a sustainable BARM will lead to a more progressive, more progressive Mindanao region. So um, there's, there's no strict, uh, you know, like um, uh, solutions now that we can do because the problems that we're having uh, when it comes to Islamic terrorism in the region of Mindanao is, uh, is really long term. I mean, the short term solution is pursuit operations and I'm not in favor of the military solution. 
uh, because it will always come back every year. That's what I always warn our military our brigade after the Marawi siege. Bantay mo yung mga ISIS. Sinasabi mo, mga sampo lang sila. The next year, we had a security briefing in the province. The 10 became 30. And then now, it's mga, I think uh, the latest count was mga 300. Almost one battalion uh, strong of uh, extremist terrorists within the Lanao region. So, you know, we, the military solution is not a permanent solution. A real solution is an economic pro uh, solution. And that is what RBH7 can bring to the Mindanao region. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Huh? Yes, uh, may I add to that? The current underemployment and unemployment rate needs now $1.7 uh, trillion dollars just to address that. Every year, we have some 1 million uh, grad college graduates. So that's, that needs another $1 trillion. There are trillions of dollars. We had a recent uh, our, uh, trade summit in uh, United Arab Emirates where I heard that United Arab Emirates are pouring in uh, billions of dollars in Turkey, in Indonesia, and all of that. But they want to come in here, but they want to invest in what uh, Congressman Khalid is saying. They want to invest in BARM. But again, economic restrictions of the constitutions. They, they cannot just put in their money and have 40% equity. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Uh, Melalis Moras from uh, PTB4. Hi, good morning po mga Kong. Uh, kung matutuloy po kasi inaasahang maipapasa na sa second reading today yung RBH7 pero sa takbo ng uh, debate may mga kumukwestiyon pa rin kung uh, kailangan nga ba ito at makatutulong nga ba ito sa ekonomiya. Even some groups may ikinakasang rally mamayang hapon dahil mukhang uh, minamadali umano itong uh, plenary interpolation. So uh, for Kong Haresko, may I as as uh, economist, uh, Yung sagot nyo po kung kailangan nga ba talaga ito sa ekonomiya, just to reiterate, lalo na dun sa mga kumukwestiyon pa rin dito. And even some congressmen uh, can comment po na yun nga kung talagang minamadali ba ito. Uh, no, nothing to do with economics. For some, it is a vehicle to, uh, to prepare for the 2025 election. So, yun siguro yun uh, ginagawa nila na uh, rally. Siguro, sunod na uh, uh, candle parade at saka sunod na uh, burning of effigy. So, nakita na natin yan sa history natin. But, uh, we're talking about the future of the country. And, uh, we have seen for the past uh, 37 years yun framers of the constitution, they were thinking of the future but only in terms of politics only in terms of politics. And they put the ultimate power on the Supreme Court. What if an investor comes in with $1 billion? And what if the future Supreme Court changes their decision na pwede, hindi na pwede pumasok sa power at saka telecoms na ginawa ni FBR Lord? So, naleche-leche na yung $1 billion siya kasi doon sa Supreme Court, eh, hindi mo ma-predict kung sino mag-ilalagay ng future president sa Supreme Court. So, economics and business, it, it is about uh, expectation. It is about anticipation. So, if we remove the, the uncertainty of expectation and anticipation, that uncertainty and that instability, uh, Foreign investment will pour in. Because uh, sabi nga ni Congressman Khalid, kulang sa edukasyon at sa barm. Our education secretary understands that only one out of five Filipinos pass high school. One out of five. The other four, wala na pong high school. So ano nangyari from the time the Americans were governing us where a lot of Filipinos were in the public school system. Ano na nangyari? Dahil 
wala po tayong pera dahil nire-restrict natin ang ating edu educational system. We cannot build enough school buildings. We cannot afford more school teachers. So, ano gagawin natin? So, sana mga Amerikano o European, katulad noon, pumasok din, tulungan tayo sa ating education. Madali na naman i-control yung education na yan. Titignan mo na lang yung, yung curriculum nila at saka umupo-upo ka lang naman at saka tignan mo kung anong sinasabi nila. So, high-tech na ngayon, social media. So, uh, hindi ko alam kung bakit... Uh, Uh, we have a democratic space, freedom of speech and uh, freedom to travel and all of that. So, okay lang mag-rally. But, uh, sana maintindihan naman nila na yung mga seditious remark uh, to disemble the country, yung mga seditious remark na, na ginagawa nila sa ultimately sa series of rallies that they anticipate, ay huwag naman sana, sayang po. Uh, tayo na ilang beses na sinasabi ng mga dating presidente, we are the next tiger of Asia. Nako, hanggang pusa na lang po tayo. So, <laughs> pusa pa rin. Nandito na nga 110 million Filipinos sa, sa Indonesia, 240 million Indonesian. Uh, three is to one ang investment sa kanila. Mas mahirap ang ease of doing business sa, sa Indonesia pero ang dami-dami po ang pasok. Bakit? Kasi palagi sila nagpapalit ng konstitusyon kung ano ang uh, nangyayari sa buong mundo. Ira na po for the past 50 years ang liberalization. Yung sa part lang ng question mo, ma'am, uh, to add... Uh, As part of the Committee on Rules, um, we will exhaust every maximum na time that we have to hear out, of course, all of the the opinions, the remarks from different congressmen and resource persons. Kasi during the RBH uh, committee meeting, madami pong sides yung napakinggan natin. Different sides, different opinions on the educational sector, um, advertisements. Pero... The one thing for me that's very clear is hindi na po ganun ka-responsive talaga yung constitution natin sa current situation natin. So, it needs to be responsive para po makater yung growing problems natin which is economic, financial. Um, narinig po natin yung uh, side ni Kong Khalid. Actually, sa lahat po ng eskwelahan yan. Ang laki po ng backlog natin sa mga classrooms, ganun. and even our statistic on grade 1 students na pag hindi na po natapos mag grade 1, hindi na po mag-aaral. Malaki po yung statistics na yun. That's why we have different NGOs uh, fostering scholarships for grade 1 students. Kasi nga po, pag hindi na po nakatawid yung bata sa grade 1, hindi na po mag-aaral, magkatrabaho na lang. So, mag maagang manual labor yon Kasi nga, because Kulang po talaga sa pondo. So, the, the, the Constitution has to be responsive for us to at least ma, malagpasan po natin yung challenges na dinaranas natin ngayon. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for can, today, can I just uh, add yes, one more? Yes, sir. Which also, um, from what I listen, when I listen to the debate, and this is the part of your question na may nagrarally regarding uh, objections to the economic Uh, amendments to our constitutions, uh, especially in my ibang groups. Um, from when I was listening to the plenary debates yesterday, I remember uh, Chair Rufus Rodriguez saying that there will be a plebiscite. And if there will be a plebiscite, ultimately that will be the end game, the output of RBH 6 in the Senate and RBH 7. Then everything that's happening now is all premature. Yung mga prayer rallies ni President Duterte saying na this is about term limit extension. Yung mga rally rallies ng mga ibang economic uh, groups saying that they will be negatively affected because we will have our time as a people and as a nation to voice our personal opinion on the amendment to the Constitution in the form of a plebiscite. So lahat yan will come in due time. 
Uh, and that's the most important thing. And that's the beauty of where our president is leading us uh, when it comes to charter change. Kami ang mag-decide. The Filipino will decide ultimately. Uh, we are just instruments, the House of Representatives and the Senate. Sana the Senate will not be a blunt instrument. <laughs> so, and in terms of timeline, I think they are the ones that we are uh, waiting for. So we will exhaust as much as possible uh, here. That's what I would like to see as far as our, I'm not part of the uh, committee and rules, but as a member of Congress, I would like to see our House leadership to exhaust all possible means so all questions shall be uh, asked so that there is no doubt that we have done our best and we have done our duty when it comes to hearing RBH-7. Tapos, we leave that all up to the Senate. Sana lang we will have statesmen of senators that will cast their vote on where they stand when it comes to RBH-6 and the amendment of the Constitution. Thank you. Uh, Joy Cantos for today's uh, last question from uh, Filipino Star Ngayon. Um, good morning po mga Kong. Sir, uh, in the implementation of contempt order versus Pastor K. Buloy, uh, he've got armed followers who's armed and who is willing to die for him just to protect him. And some of them were in the noble profession of firearms. In case of our case scenario, how are you prepared uh, when the situation turns violent and there is an staccato of fire? Well, uh, pagi ko naman po, mayroon ba po tayo yung uh, special forces dito sa uh, Congress, Congress at may mga polis naman po tayo no? na pwede pong uh, maiwasan po yan. Ang tanong, ang tanong nyo is paano ho ma-prevent? How are you prepared for our more scenario po? Ah, pagi ko, uh, pagi ko naman, hindi naman po tayo nakatakot naman ho yan, pero pagi ko, hindi naman ho tayo aabot doon. Okay. <laughs> Sir, sabi pa po ni Baby Sara, tigilan nyo na daw po yung hearing kasi trial by publicity daw po. Um, uh, hindi ko man po na narinig po sa kanya yun. At uh, wala pa ako nababasang ganun. Ang uh, amin lang po ay uh, klaro, may bill, meron pong uh, hearing na ginanap at uh, ang kanyang hindi po pagpunta ay talagang uh, kaduda-duda. Kasi kung wala ka naman pong tinatago, may kasabihan, eh, ba't ka naman hindi magpakita? At ito ay na, ano pa, tandaan ho nyo, pinag-uusapan ho natin, prangkisa nila. At yan ay sa uh, trabaho po ng Kongresong uh, Tugunan. Lahat ho ng prangkisa ay trabaho po natin, yan ay privilege, na privilege na binibigay po ng Estado sa, sa, sa kanila. And they should be responsible uh, franchise holders. Any violation uh, will be uh, dealt with accordingly. So, trabaho po natin yan. Wala po tayong uh, kung makano, wala po tayong uh, uh, pinapaboran, wala po tayong inipit, meron pong bill. Uh, as matter of fact, apat kong resolusyon ang uh, nakabimbin tungkol po dyan sa SMNI at kay Pastor Kibuloy. Kaya yan po ay ating uh, uh, sisikaping matapos sa madaling panahon. Uh, on my part na lang, sir. Uh, sir, competitiveness is intertwined with the country's economy po. Um, if we pass the RBH7 and the RBH6, yung economic reforms, um, and, and the foreign direct investment will come in, if it's really a vehicle for progress, do you think mababayaran na po natin yung uh, 14.62 trillion foreign and domestic the by the end of the 2030s, sir, masyadong malaki na po. Paano po kayong paraan doon? Patak, patak. Alam niyo po, uh, meron tayong uh, bagong theory sa economics na mula pa noong 1998 na it's not about the amount of debt you have, it's how you grow greater than your debt. So, ang U.S. ay umihiram ng uh, nagpiprint ng pera, mga $3 billion per day. So, ang growth rate nila is 1.4% uh, sa interest rate ng babayaran nila. 
So yung modelo na yan ay ginamit uh, ng Europa, ng China, ng Japan. Uh, ayun na po ang bagong tira. As long as you grow uh, faster than the interest rate of the bankers, okay lang yan. So ang problema natin ay pag hindi tayo mag-grow, so ang target natin, sana sundin ang growth rate ng China, doon lumilipad siya ng 11% per year. Maabot lang tayo ng 6%. Ang interest rate sa bangko ngayon, dati 2% lang. Ang interest rate, 5%. 5.5. So, kailangan mag-grow tayo. Uh, mahit natin ang target na 8%. Paano natin may hit yan? Sa United Kingdom, ang tawag sa economics, political economy. So, kabit ang politics sa economics kasi ang politics na nangyayari ngayon o ini-expect na nagpapahiram sa atin na dapat mature tayo. Mature tayo. So, kung nagre-reklamo ibang quarters na ayaw nila mag-attend tungkol sa prangkisa nila, sana maalala nila na yung mga Lopez noong prangkisa ng ABS-CBN, nag-attend sila. So, no one is above the law. So, kung ayaw talaga nila mag-attend, so, meron naman tayong judicial system. So, we have to show uh, uh, statesmanship kami sa Congress and uh, give the democratic space to those who uh, refuse uh, to, to attend. Uh, so, bahala sila. Pero, uh, huwag naman sana yun. Uh, magkagulo yung mga rally nila kasi kabit na naman yan sa economics yung gagawin nila. So, sinisira nila yun. Uh, yun ekonomiya na pinaghirapan mula nung panahon ni Presidente Cory hanggang ngayon, sinisira nila yun. Direksyon ng ating mahal na Presidente. Maraming salamat po. Thank you. Uh, we invite our honorable guests to share their uh, closing statements if there is any. Thank you. So again, uh, on behalf of um, especially, I think I'm the only Mindanaoan here, Mindanaoan legislature, legislators, uh, um, I'd like to thank our friends in the media for uh, your time and uh, for helping us relate to the uh, general public uh, um, our thoughts and our opinions on uh, pressing matters uh, this week. And uh, I hope you all have a safe and fruitful uh, weekend and uh, sana lang scandal-free month. <laughs> thank you. Maraming salamat ulit sa inyo. We're very happy to be with you this morning. And uh, we wish you all the best. Patubay po tayo lahat ng Pumika Pal. Magandang umaga sa inyo. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat, uh, our friends in the media. And I'm very honored coming from Aklan and Boracay to be with our noble political family sa Congressman Khalid Dimaporo, Gastam Bunting, and uh, Paulo Ortega. Maraming salamat po. Uh, maraming salamat po sa patuloy nga po na pagsuporta sa ka uh, in helping us shape the the Philippines uh, of course for our next generation maraming salamat po thank you Congressman Ted uh, House Assistant Majority Leader Paulo Chairman um, Kali and Chairman Gas for uh, joining us today and to everyone thank you for your participation uh, see you tomorrow magandang tanghali.